Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, we'll do a tour. I'll talk about what you might want to do for your garden mid-July. I think today is July 15th. Um, talk about some fertilizing, but you know, really just kind of walk through the garden, kind of assess what's going on. That's probably the most important thing that you can do, is to take time walking through your garden several times a week, just looking at the plants, looking at the plant color, deciding if they need fertilizer, deciding if the leaves may have diseases on them, but just kind of really looking around. First thing I want to show you is just one of my favorite flowers. This is an artichoke. They look like sea anemones. Let's pull back and see if that bumblebee goes back on there. But they are just beautiful purple flowers. This one just opened up yesterday. It's going to get even more deeper in the purple color and it's going to get much bigger and the bees just kind of swim through there like clownfish. It's really, really beautiful. I don't even harvest my artichokes to eat them. They just don't give you a whole lot. But I just love this flower and the bumblebees love them. So right in here, I hope to grow artichokes every year and I'm just going to let them flower. But it's really worth adding to your garden. Cow peas are doing well. I've got deer coming in here and eating them. Actually a family of deer, three big females and a couple of uh, fawns moved into the wooded area. The previous deer family has moved out and a new one has moved in. The poblano peppers starting to look good. Been giving them fish emulsion every seven to ten days just to get them going. Also gave them Agro Thrive. I've been using both. They're going to be doing really well for the rest of the summer. Always want to show you the tomato plant that seeded itself. It is six feet tall now. No tomatoes on there yet. They're definitely going to be larger sized tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes um, would already have tomatoes on them. Totally healthy. A little bit of insect damage. I'm not watering it. I'm not feeding it. I'm just letting it do its thing. Added in some melons. They are getting fish emulsion or agro thrive every seven to ten days until I feel like the roots are really established and are growing well. They were transplants. The biggest thing for transplants is yeah the upper growth looks bigger but the root systems still sometimes are only the size of that container so you have to take care of them until that root system spreads out is getting the moisture from the soil is getting the fertilizer from the soil and they're almost there. I'll probably give them one more feeding and then I'll just let them go. Potatoes are ready to be harvested. Sweet potatoes are looking good. The onions are all going to be um, taken away from there, uh, stored somewhere. I'll probably eat them. I mean, that many onions I could eat, let's see, one, two, probably four days. But they will be stored in the house so that they last a little bit longer. Coming inside, this is kind of exciting in the sense that I am growing cool weather crops now. I will link the videos in there uh, for the shade cloth. I've been, shade cloth. I've been getting lots of questions for them so they will be in this video description. But before we go in there, the cucumber under the shade cloth is much greener than, one I'm, than the one I'm going to show you, but it's doing well. Everything here was just water too this morning. There's another cucumber plant. It's outside the shade cloth obviously. And it's going to tend to droop and get a little bit beat up because that sun is just pounding down on there. So, you know, definitely south and Texas, you know, most of the southern states are getting hit with brutal heat. You're going to need shade cloth for your warm season crops if you want them to really produce. I wanted to show you this. So, I'm going to let this cucumber plant run along here. And every once, this is really hot too. This top of the soil. It's got to be 90 degrees and then you get down it's cooler but it's it's hot it's just not cool so keep it in mind we're going over to the cool plants. Right in here you can see the root system. As your cucumbers crawl across the ground you can drop some dirt right on the vine and it's going to secure um, it's going to grow new root systems and it's going to secure itself to the dirt so it'll have multiple places where it's pulling in nutrients. This is wonderful to do for vining squash plants, the summer squash. This way if the vine borer comes in into place, you have another root system set up. But a lot of your vining cucumbers and squash will do that. And you just put some soil on there, water it in, they're good to go. This is what you lose if you trellis your cucumbers upwards, they're not going to have that extra contact to the soil with their vines and they're not going to grow extra root systems. Sometimes that makes a big difference. Green beans look good. So coming in here, 
that soil was actually, it surprised me how warm that top was. I'm gonna get a digital thermometer. This is cool to the touch. It's under shade cloth, morning sun comes in here. The peas are starting to come up over there. We got radishes, spinach in there, lettuce, I believe that's carrots, I don't see them yet. And then maybe some beets are coming up. It looks like some weed seeds are mixed in here too. But the shade cloth is keeping this so much cooler that I'm able, I believe I'll be able to grow these crops to proper roots and proper leaves without them bolting or being problematic. I may have started a little bit too early, maybe two weeks too early, but I recommend experimenting because it's July 15th. I'm growing my cool crops now. I will start a bunch of these in August, but this shade cloth makes just a huge difference. Added in a watermelon right into there. Things are, are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Tomatoes forming, cherry tomatoes over here. I have to get in this weekend, trellis everything up. When I look in here, you know, I see some potential leaf spot and problems. So everything's gonna be hit again with hydrogen peroxide. It's been a while. Gonna hit them again with my aspirin spray, not at the same time. I like to use hydrogen peroxide um, H2O2 by itself. Aspirin spray, I mean, I can mix that into other things if I wanted to. So H2O2, clean the leaves, wait 24 hours, hit it with the aspirin spray, and then I'll put an antifungal on there. And I'm just trying to manage down any kind of fungal issues on the tomato plants. Like you see a lot of stuff down at the bottom. The bottom leaves often get yellow, get beat up. That's just what a tomato plant does. It takes the nutrients from the bottom, sends it upward when needed during times of stress. But if most of your plants are looking green and you'll see my tomatoes are looking pretty good, you don't really need to worry. Tower of peppers, beans, all that from a video I did with um, Callie Kim, growing really well. The whole key to this, some people said, oh, you'll never grow you know, six peppers up there and that you're just overcrowding. Yes, I'm overcrowding, but the key is consistent watering, watering every other day, maybe once a day, managing with a water-soluble organic every seven to 10 days, keeps these plants fed, you keep the moisture in there and they can really handle being in a container and maybe, you know, competing for space. They may not get as large as a plant in the ground, but you're gonna get lots of production. In fact, I've been taking these off at about this size, even with small plants, and I'm just using them with potatoes in the morning that I pull out of the garden. The shishitos you could take off this small. So I'm not even worried. I'm not waiting for these to become really big plants, removing flowers and removing uh, peppers. I'm just letting them do their thing and I come out and harvest them. Sheshwans, they're supposed to turn red, but you could take some now. They're gonna be spicy. They're gonna add to whatever dish you're cooking. Kale is still doing well. That needs to be watered. I actually forgot to water that one coming around here. Let me fix this real quick. Butternut squash, acorn squash, all doing well. I have the butternut on the other side kind of trailing through the ground and I'm actually burying parts of that vine because the vine borer does show up. We'll give that a close. And again, burying the vine will have your squash in this case, the spaghetti, I'm sorry, this uh, butternut squash will send out roots. You can also do this for pumpkins. You could do this for watermelons. Just coming across this way, beans I've been harvesting out of there, kale I'm taking. I don't even remember what wave cucumber this is, but it got a nice drink today. This is what you wanna look for. You know, beautiful little cucumber starting in there. Nice dark color, very dark green, some holes in there. You know, I gave this, there's, you can see remains of dust on there. Um, the, I don't know why I lost my thought, the <laughs> insect dust, spinosad. Again, just because it's organic doesn't mean it won't hurt the good flowers. I, I mean, the good insects. So on the outer side at night, rinse it off during the day. I always want to stress that. You should use your products wisely so you do as least harm as you can to, you know, insects you want in your garden. But this is nice and green. The group in here looks pretty good. I want to show you this. If you're growing on a patio or in containers, this is patio. 
uh, patio baby, I believe. So these are eggplant that are ready to be harvested. Look at all these. This is a poor job on washing off the insect dust. But these are getting killed by flea beetles, so that's all under control now. I'm going to take off all these eggplant. You take them off when they're about this small, and I will kind of light, lightly uh, saute them up, and I'll be eating them this weekend. Pepper plants, I think I have four growing in this 20-gallon root pouch. I sell these at my seed and garden shop. Full of peppers. A little bit of possible disease on the leaves. Sometimes too, like I always forget to water this pot because it's kind of out of the way. So if you're not watering your plants consistently, you're gonna get die off on the bottom leaves and you're, the bottom leaves often get weaker for tomato plants, pepper plants, and other plants. And when they get weaker, the disease is set in. So you're really looking to kind of make sure you don't, don't have spots and disease all over the top. On the bottom, sometimes that's not so bad. But I've also been, and if you're just hearing this for the first time, I want you to test spray and look for damage. But I've been hitting most of my plants out here with eight ounces of hydrogen peroxide in one gallon of water. If you're just doing this for the first time, four ounces in a gallon of water is a good way to start. But it's basically cleans the leaves and it's really helping my garden. Hydrogen peroxide's not that expensive. It contacts the leaves, cleans up the leaves, and it's gone within a day or two. So all the tomatoes in here, nice and green. I'll be doing a whole tomato tour once a bunch of these start turning colors, but they have to be tied up and all that, you know? But you're looking for tops of the plants, nice and green, not that many problems. Some of the leaves, this one broke off. That's, we could go stick that in the vase. You're just looking for the general, you know, overall plant to be looking healthy, and it really, really is. This whole space is going crazy. The trellis, I'll be doing a whole trellising video too. People always have questions. I like to do one in the beginning of the year for people to construct trellises, and then I like to do them to show you how they're doing with plants growing on there. Cucumbers on the ladder, cantaloupe, just going crazy. Should have been only one plant. I got two in there. Watermelon right in there. It's all you know, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Cantaloupe, this side, watermelon in there. I have three watermelon growing on that plant. These are a little bit out of control. The under leaves down in the center, they're all yellowing. That's because they're just not getting any sun. So when I do the video for this, if I get to it, I'll be thinning out all the leaves that are really hidden by the leaves out here. They just, you just need the leaves outside. What I've been waiting for for this is there's a um, cantaloupe, there's one up there, there's another one in there, back there I should say. I think I saw one when I was lifting this up. Yeah, one right there, there's another one. I've been waiting for the cantaloupe to show up, the female flowers. They just weren't coming, so I don't want to prune off any of the runners that come out the sides or the suckers or whatever you call them. There's another one. Oh, here's one more. And then that was the one I was showing you from back there. So before I start pruning off some of these uh, vines and kind of containing the shape and everything like that, I wanted to make sure I had a viable cantaloupe on there. And I do. Another round of cucumbers. This was probably my second round judging on the size. And it's looking pretty good. The female flowers are starting to show up. There's one down there. So I'll have cucumbers in there. These are probably 10 feet tall now. So the sunflowers are doing what I wanted and the beans are growing into there. I've been harvesting, harvesting the purple beans out of there. Um, jalapenos, got a video coming out for this soon. This plant planting area did what I wanted it to do. It had, it has 25 plants in there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'll do maybe 20 next time and I'll leave the center open just so sunlight gets in there. That's the only thing I would change with this design. So 20, 21 peppers in a four foot by four foot space next year. And I don't think I'll have any problem with that. What else do we have going on? So again, looking green, coming down here, you see beat up leaves. We're gonna get to some tomatoes, cherry ones that really are showing um, some problems. 
The scallop squash is vining its way out there. I just pulled those off to remember to take them inside. The heat is making this droop. It looks like I have to do a better job of washing off the insect dust. I thought I soaked this really well. This is the original cucumber plant and just standing back, it's still going. So the things that I've been doing to take care of it are really keeping it alive. The upper growth is just beautiful. It's nice and green. I remove a lot of leaves from the bottom. I did a whole video on that last year. Maybe I'll do that again. Peppermint oil spray on the underside. Hydrogen peroxide now. Fertilizing. It's going pretty well. I'll probably do a, an overall gardening uh, fertilizing kind of like mid-July, late July. Cucumbers forming. It gets so confusing because you say like mid-season and is that mid-growth of the plant? Mid-season is different for everybody. Summer heat shows up at different times. Like this whole vine is dying off. I don't know why. So I'm just letting it go. One of them died off over here. But at the same time, there's new growth and there's beautiful growth. So some of this plant is doing well. What I think is happening is I've skipped watering this a couple of times. I just forgot or actually that wasn't true. I thought it was going to die out, so I just let it go. And then all of a sudden it started perking up and then I started watering it more and it's coming back to life. Your plants in this heat of the summer need a ton of water. I didn't want to do a video on it because it's kind of boring, but I turned my uh, hose right on there, spray nozzle, 20 seconds, 20 seconds right in there, 20 seconds right in there, tons of water. Then I come over here, 20 seconds right onto the sunflower and then this space that's open because he send out all these shallow roots 20 seconds right here so it's a nice deep soaking that I started giving this plant and it's really coming back I mean look at the growth here's a cucumber beetle oh it just flew away look at the growth beautiful green this is dying off not much I can do I'm just gonna die let it go super hots looking great they're always late to flower and late to produce. That's just kind of what they do. You can see how that acorn, uh, I don't know, I, acorn squash to the right, butternut to the left, spaghetti behind me. It's doing really well. Carrots are bringing in insects, beets. I just cleared out this area. Got a nice big weed back there I got to remove. I'll be cleaning this up, eating this, storing this, and this will be transformed over. The Mexican sunflowers are looking wonderful. I love the color. They're so big, they're falling over, which I didn't realize that, so I'll have to put up some sort of staking next year. Asparagus looking good from where I kind of cleaned it all up so that I could get in there. Weed eater got in there, cleaned up everything. All the peppers on here are doing well. It's time for a nice watering, which I will get to today. Um, I only did half the garden this morning. Probably give them some water soluble fertilizer and they might experiment with a 0 10, 10 fertilizer, more bloom just to see how it helps them. Tomatoes in here, love to see them out of control, love to see the green everywhere. Onions I've just been pulling out and eating them. Tomatillos are getting set up. Lots of tomatoes forming on here. This was the first group that I put in. I'm not so impressed with the Beef Master, but it's coming back. Marigolds, I don't know if they're helping or not, but I like them tucked in there. And then we'll spin our way around here. And you know, the growth is good. The more you water, the more you water regularly, the better your plants are going to do. And that's the question I get all the time. How often should I water? I don't know the answer to that. You have to water more often than you think is what I tell people now. Just, I've already harvested all the tomatoes off of that. So I have three more, six more, you know, just, they're just rolling in. Here's what I wanted to show you. So in this area I have my cherry tomatoes and you can see that they're looking pretty yellow down there. Starting on the bottom, working their way up. You might think, well maybe this is early blight. It could be. Over here is even worse. What I noticed observing these plants is it started over here first, earlier in the season, and this plant, maybe this variety, just tends to have that happen. They're all getting sprayed the same way. Here's a cherry tomato that has nothing going on. This is a black cherry which I highly recommend. You can see these metal signs, black cherry. You write on them with a grease pencil. We sell them at our seed shop. They're wonderful. So you just rub that off with a towel. You can rewrite on there year after year. The black cherry 
is not showing this or this. This may be coming from a disease. This may just be how the variety acts in my zone with the heat and everything like that. But you want to try out different types of cherry tomatoes because look at this beauty. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a disease. It should be over here if it is. If it's the heat of the sun, this one's doing pretty well. So this is how you sort of select out what tomatoes might do best in your garden is try different varieties. So black cherry will be a keeper definitely. These will all get sprayed. I'm pretty sure that they're gonna be perfectly fine. Really nothing to worry about. More tomatoes down there. Look, here's a good example too. Maybe there is something going on in here because this plant has it. The plant over there has it. This one has something. So maybe something's going on. In that case, the black cherry is really resisting it. So you gotta like that plant. I don't think so. I think something else is going on just with these varieties. So I will prune them, spray them. Things should be fine. This area is all getting kind of redone. I'll be planting cool crops into these different beds. It's really time now, mid-July. Maybe your energy has kind of gone away or you're kind of beat up from the heat like your plants. If you want to get your garden back in shape, what I would recommend is today, this weekend, go and give everything a huge soaking. More water than you think it needs. And then do that again in two or three days. And then again in two or three days. Really get the water to your plants. But also, you know, in the next couple of days, give everything that water-soluble fertilizer. You can't really overdo it unless you've been aggressive week to week to week. They could use something more. If the plants that you're giving them to don't use it, maybe they die off, something happens, you could have nitrogen and fertilizer in there for the new plants that you're putting in. But you can really kind of jumpstart and get your garden going again, especially now, hopefully, the heat will start dying down and coming down as, you know, August rolls in. You know, not true in every, every garden, I know. States are crazy hot this year. So give them, you know, the drink of the, the water soluble. I will link in my Amazon shop for fish emulsion. I am also affiliated with AgroThrive. I will put that in the video description. Water soluble organic fertilizer. But I'm really happy mid-July where my plants are. Tomato towers are doing good. I talked about in um, a recent video, ever bearing strawberries. They're still going and they will keep going all season long. I have cilantro mixed in here, basil in here. These have to be watered. They just dry out really quickly, but you can start rolling in basil, cilantro, dill, more herbs, start putting them in places. Here are the eggplant that remember they were struggling in the beginning of the year. This plant's still not doing what it's supposed to do. I'm gonna hit it again with fish emulsion, with AgroThrive, with one of those, just keep the fertilizer going till the root system's really established, they get what they need, they're bringing in water well. Pretty soon I'm gonna have just tons of eggplant here. So, so mid-season care, just to keep it simple, water-soluble fertilizer. Then start watering the plants really well over the next week several times and really see if that makes a difference. I think that it will. Let's finish up. Still getting some blackberries, they're pretty much gone. Still getting some blueberries. They're, they're still there, except they, have a, um, except they have a, I think a catbird is what it's called, coming in here, two of them, and they're starting to eat the blueberries. That may be a problem next year. Some yellow peppers in there. That's new soil, as I said before. They were hit once with a water soluble. I'm just gonna hit them again. Don't, you know, over worry about it. Just stick with the plan that works. Water soluble fertilizer is always going to help your plants. You can't do a lot of damage with organic water soluble. Shishitos are looking good. I've been dealing with some problems on the peppers over here. I think they're going to be okay. Not too worried about it. And I just wanted to show you this. We'll end right here. So on top of that pepper, it looks terrible. It's kind of white, yellowy, wrinkly. That's nothing to worry about. That's actually sun scald. So when I was treating this for the fungus, I opened up the space pruned back leaves and the summer sun has just been beating down on there. So after seven or 10 days, it just bleaches, basically a sunburn on the pepper. So it's perfectly fine. Nothing you can do, harvest it, cut off that part and just enjoy the pepper. 
Thanks so much for watching. I know that we are beat up along with our gardens come mid-July. Try and rally, get the water in there, the water-soluble fertilizer. Think about planting some cool crops using shade cloth, or if you can't do it now, that's okay. Think about it for next year, putting a plan in place to roll in that shade cloth. If you want to experiment with the cool crops, maybe start putting them out now under the shade cloth. Not, on shade cloth, not under shade cloth, just see what they do. And that will give you a sense of when you can start planting your fall garden um, and putting in you know, the cool crops really when the summer's still here before the fall arrives. Again, thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and enjoy the weekend.